If it isn't the great hero, my father's murderer, I came here to kill you. If you let me go, you might not catch me next time. Curse my father and his idiot ambitions. He lost everything for us, didn't he? Look, I don't know what happened to the Kuslins, but from what I hear, it was horrible. The entire war was, but what my father did shouldn't harm my entire family. Nathaniel Howe. Nathaniel Howe, a character who is... Well, a lot of different things to me. Um, he is... Someone who has lost... Who has lost everything. He is the son of a hated man. He is... Someone who has to atone for something that wasn't even his fault. And he inherit, and is someone who inherited a legacy that no one should have to inherit. It's just... His story is kind of sad in a way. Not too sad, but sad nonetheless. He is a companion, a swordsman, an archer, an adventurer... He's someone who fits in well within the Dragon Age world, and he's some, and he's one of the characters that has all that kind of well now has always stood out to me after I learned about him. Like he's one of the the many characters that always has st stayed in my memory, even years after I stopped playing the thing he was in. He stands right up there with Liliana, Morrigan, Varric. Um. Flemeth, Alistair, like a bunch of different people from the various games that, oh, Cassandra Pendragon, or Pentagast, or whatever, like, those ones stand out to me, they really stand out, and, what else, they just, they have a special place in my memory, and some and they've probably affected the way I've tried to write sometimes in more the way in more ways than I'm probably aware of. Nathaniel started his life out as a nobleman. He was born the eldest son of House Howe and Amaranthine. He would one day inherit he w he was supposed to one day inherit the title of Arl from his father Rendon, but um, well, as you'll find out later, that didn't go as he expected or anyone expected. And he grew up idolizing his father. He would hear stories of his dad's adventures during the Ferelden Upright Rebellion when they, I think, um, well, they rose up against, I believe it was Orle, and won. And because of this, and his father was a hero in this war, he fought alongside another man named, I believe it was either Brian or Bryce Kusland, who was his best friend, or at least his friend at the time. Uh, he would frequently visit his father's trophy room. He would uh, dream about one day holding, wearing his uncle's armor, or one day being strong enough to hold his father's sword. Which is kind of nice in a way, but... Actually, no, not, but, um, I kind of, this is some of the, the small little details about Nathaniel that I've always found very, I won't say compelling, but something I can, sim I can sort of empathize with. Like, who doesn't grow up loving their parents, of idolizing who they are? Well, not all of us do. Some of us grow up hating our parents, but, like, I grew up loving my parents and kind of wanted to be like them to some extent. So in that regard, I can kind of see where Nathaniel Howe's upbringing was like. And he just thought the world of his dad. Uh, even though there, and this trophy room would also become like a safe haven for him. Like whenever his father and mother would fight, he would just retreat to the trophy room and kind of forget about his horrible home life. And one day when it came time for him to learn about like stuff he would be using as an adult... Eventually, uh, like they would assume at some point he'd have to go into a war. He, his mother suggested something that for once his father agreed with, which was they wanted him to be sent to the free marches to be trained by Sir Rodolphe, I believe, a former chevalier. Now, Nathaniel hated this intensely. 
He hated the idea that he said he wanted to be by his brother Thomas, although this wasn't out of love for Thomas. He actually secretly thinks that his father favored Thomas over him. And he put up, he protested this, but it was all futile. He was sent there regardless, and that was it. He spent eight years being trained by this guy. And he also learned of archery this time, much to uh, the guy, his mentor's debt, much to his mentor's chagrin. He didn't like that. His, his instructor was also very strict. Like, he learned pretty quick, okay, if I'm going to make fun of this guy, I better make sure he's not an earshot when I do it. And it was very strict and stuff that actually is pretty good for you, in my opinion, when it comes to education. Like, strictness helps sometimes. And he liked the free marches. He grew to love it. And he might have stayed there had it not been for the fifth flight. Might have. Um, it's still up in the air. But, yeah, it seems like he would have stayed there probably if he had a choice. Now, before we go further on this, there's one thing about Nathaniel Howe that doesn't have to do with him. But it, it influenced his life greatly. And that was the actions of his asshole of a dad. Arl Rendon Howe. This guy was a piece of shit. He was not only involved with the betrayal of King Caelan at the Battle of Ostagar, like he was just associated with it. He had no problem killing people, doing whatever, being sinister, being borderline evil is how I would describe this guy. Like, he had no qualms with killing people if it benefited him in some way. And as Tim Curry put it, well, not Tim, I can't exactly say what he said, but yeah, it's, he was deaf. I think Tim Curry said that by then you'll be looking forward to his character's death. And he's voiced by Tim Curry, so you know he's going to be an evil bastard. Like, Tim Curry himself, I don't think is that bad, but the guys he voices are definitely bad. And... Yeah, anyway, and on top of all of this, depending on what origin you choose in the game, if you chose the noble human route, you were a member of the Kuslin family, he butchered everyone the warden knew. His parents, his sister-in-law, his nephew, well, their nephew, I mean, either the guy or the girl that was, either the guy that they had a one-night stand with and was being railed by, or the girl elf that they, they were railing and having a one-night stand with. And, and Arl Rendon Howe did all this because he was ambitious and power hungry. And he murdered not only them, but he also murdered Bryce Kuslin, who was his friend that he had known for years, for decades probably. Like he was an evil piece of shit. And he did all of this probably without a second thought. He showed little remorse about it even as he was confronted by it before his death. And even as he's dying, he does not lament what he did. He just goes, make her spit on you. I deserved more. So he was an unrepentant piece of filth who killed, probably on a whim, and for his own benefit always. And unfortunately for Nathaniel, he has to pay for it because he is this guy's son. After the, after the fifth blight was taken care of, all the Howell lands were seized by the crown, and the Howell family all became pariahs because of this one insufferable evil douchebag's actions. And that is just... It's messed up, really. I mean, it's the way things probably would have been done if you went back to the Dark Ages and you were a nobleman. If you did something messed up, your entire family would pay for it. But at the same time... Why should a child pay for the sins of their father? It, it's messed up. It's warped. But again, this is how the way things were done. And all of his children have probably suffered for this, not just Nathaniel. But Nathaniel, I think, suffered it the most. Like, he was still in Kirkwall when, he, when the news reached him. And all he knew was a Grey Warden had murdered his father for betraying the crown, or King Caelan. And he was angry. He left his mentor, Sir Rodolfo, whatever, whatever his name is, he left just to spare his mentor the embarrassment of being associated with him. And he returned to Ferelden. And 
yeah, he had some idea of what he wanted to do in mind, but I think he was still just processing what he had just learned. His father was dead. The man he idolized was gone. And all he ever knew had been taken from him. That was all he knew. That was all he had, and it was stripped from him. Again, it was unfair, but that was the way it went. Now, after the fifth blow was over and Nathaniel returned home, he snuck into what's known as Vigil's Keep, which had been his childhood home. Now, when I said after the fifth blight, all the Howlands had been seized, they were all given to the Grey Wardens. And the Warden was actually there after he'd been caught after he snuck in. And I think they were going to execute the guy, to be perfectly honest. They were considering executing him or flogging him or something. And one of the quotes you'll see at the beginning of this video is from what he says when he first meets the Warden. And to put it bluntly, he kind of believed, kind of initially believed the BS that was said about the Grey Warden, especially if it's a noble. I think I could swear he said that um, Bryce Cusum was going to sell Ferelden out to Orlais or something. Like Arl Howe said that himself. That's how he justified what he did he, as a lie. He probably told it to a few people, and that's what Nathaniel learned. And so he believed that lie as well. And depending on the choices, like whatever your speech level is or whatever, you can sort of talk him down, and you have the option of making him a Grey Warden. Either through right of conscription or, well, I don't really remember, but... Yeah, and he more or less becomes a Grey Warden. And he's kind of perplexed by this. He's like, do you enjoy having Grey Wardens that want to kill you? And the Warden has the option of responding, some of my, some of my best friends have tried to kill me. So um, Nathaniel Howe's not exactly anything new to him, if you choose that. And the thing about this point is that he, he survives the joining. That's the most important thing at this, at this point. And he, let me see, how do I put this? He does go on various adventures or as a companion of the warden, and they more or less bond. At some point, you have the option as the warden to give him his grandfather's old beau, who himself was a gray warden at one point. Actually, Arl Howe hated his father for becoming a gray warden. Like I said this in a previous video, he felt like he had abandoned his family. And Nathaniel kind of defends his grandfather's actions. It kind of shows that he's not a complete asshat, unlike his dad. And at some point he reunites with his sister, and he still kind of defends his father in a way, saying, look, our father got caught up in politics. There's no reason to bash him. And his sister's like, Oh, Nathan, Nathaniel, you never saw Father for how he really was. You did not see who he really was when you were not looking, when you were not paying attention. And that is true. I get the impression that when that Nathaniel Hale, uh, Nathan, not Nathaniel Hale, Nathaniel Howe, I always get the impression that whatever kind of person his father really was, and I still maintain he was an evil piece of shit, he must have been completely oblivious to it because there is no way he would have ever done the things his father did or or justify them if he saw his father doing them and he knew better and this is another thing i think makes him someone i can relate with in a way like we all have parents who have a side of them we never see till years later like again i grew up loving my parents and wanting to be like them but at the same time they had a side of them i never saw and when I saw it, it definitely changed the way I looked at them for a while. It made it hard for me to look at them the same way. Eventually I got over it and things went back to normal. Nathaniel had no such luxury. His father was dead. He could not... He could not... confront his father back, find out what his father was thinking. But he eventually came to accept that what his father did was in the wrong. Also, along the way, you kind of gradually see more and more of his personality, which is, he's a good person. He's someone you would definitely want to fight beside. He's someone you would want on your side. 
He's someone that if I met in real life, I would want to be friends with them. And he has all these good little barbs with other companions. Like this one elf who attacked other humans because she thought one of them had taken her sister. He's like, how does it feel to know the your attacks on them were basically based on your own prejudice? And this was in, during an argument they were having. And he's like, also, your, your ears are stupid. And then she goes, now who's being childish? And, yeah, it's good. It's very good. And I wouldn't say he goes to a tone for what he's... Well, yeah, kind of. Um, but, yeah, he goes on to do th some heroics. And you have the option of putting him in charge for protecting the keep before the final fight. But there is a possibility if you don't have the keep all the way defended, he dies. So I never did that with him. Like, he was my favorite camp companion in that game. Like, he was the only one I gave a shit about. And, well, as you know, no, um, there was the dwarf companion that came over from the main game. I also liked him. And he just... Mm, yeah, it just hits a lot of nerve. It just... He's someone that I look at and I think, this guy needs a hug, to be perfectly honest. Like, not from me, but someone needs to hug this guy. To be perfectly honest, what happened to him is not only messed up, it's illogical, irrational. But, like I said before, this was just how things probably were done back in the day if you went to the Dark Ages and you were a noble. Like, if you did something that was not part of the status quo or um, kosher, they would take your lands. That actually happened to a guy who turned out to be a serial killer. And it turns out he may have been framed. Then again, he was French, and the French had done this to the Templar, so I'm not that surprised. And that's all I can really say about this part of him. Um, he goes on to be, if you do things right with him, he contributes a lot to the actions of the Warden at, during, the, during the portion of the Awakening story. And he can be, well, no, he's a very good character, in my opinion. And someone who I think was very well written and very well thought out. Now, what happens after Awakening to Nathaniel Howe kind of depends on what you did in the story. Um, in one version, he retires from the, from the Grey Wardens to sound it's not for him. Later, his nephew joins them and becomes the Warden Commander, and he, his nephew in that scenario, redeems the Howe name. In another, ver in another ending, he actually saves Fergus Kustlin, the human noble warden's brother. And as repayment, Fergus grants Nathaniel some of the house former lands. So he also does that. And another one I can't remember, but um, I think through the becoming a Grey Warden, he found some kind of redemption, not for himself, but for his family that may be through his actions, the family could be looked at and say, okay, look, you have this one guy who did this messed up thing, but his son was basically a hero. He did good stuff. He, good did, he did good deeds. And, yeah, I, and he always, like, he didn't try to do damage, as far as I'm concerned. He was someone that wasn't trying to be malicious. He did what he thought was right. Or what he believed to be the right thing. And he had no problem calling people out on their bullshit. And if something weirded him out, he would be up front with it. Or about it. And, yeah, regardless of the ending, he would go on to do stuff either associated with the Grey Wardens, like he appeared in Dragon Age 2 working with them. I don't know if he was still a warden at the time or if he had retired by then. But yeah, he he still has a place in the story as far as I'm concerned. And I hope to see more of him. Like, I wish there was a game about him or a story, like a comic. There might be, and, I just, and I'm not aware of, because again, it's been years since I read this Dragon Age expanded, expanded lore and, and other reading mediums outside of the games, but... I would just like a game following this guy, seeing like what he did after Awakening and maybe after 2, just to see 
what kind of actions he would take afterwards. Like, did he work further to redeeming the Hound name so the rest of his family wouldn't be fucking pariahs? Did he just learn to accept it and live with it? I know he leaves, um... He does have a special... I think he has something of a soft spot for his nephew. I, I want to say. But yeah, it seems like he sometimes will see them from time to time. And there's also that. Anyway, I got far away from this. The point is, as far as I'm concerned, he wor his actions more than redeem his family. And if the rest of the world could not see that he was unbefitting of the punishment his family has to endure, then there's something wrong with Ferelden. Granted, Ferelden was already messed up before the Blight, it just got a little bit more messed up afterwards. Skills. Um, like I mentioned, he was trained in the free marches by a former Chevalier. Chevalier, I believe is what they're called. And in in this period, he became very adept with swordsmanship and art, and also archery, but that was less intentional on his mentor's part. He was taught to use daggers and swords and in the art of war. This was one of the reasons he was sent there, was to learn these kinds of things. And he was very adept at it, very skilled. He's also... I would say he can kind of be sneaky, but at the same time, he got caught trying to, when he broke into the veil, to reclaim some of his stuff from his family. But yeah, there's also that. Now, when it comes to what makes Nathaniel appeal to me is. There's a couple of things. One is the idea of inherited guilt. Now, I hate this. Like, in works of fiction, it's a good theme. But in reality, I despise it. Like, I find the idea of suffering for something a family member or an ancestor has done to be utter bullshit. But in a work of fiction, it's a good theme. And Nathaniel kind of epitomizes this because, again, his family became pariahs after the fifth blight was over and everyone learned what Arl Hal had done. And Nathaniel had his home taken from him. He didn't know what happened to the rest of his family. And I imagine everywhere he went, anyone who knew the truth about him looked at him with disdain and disgust. Unjustifiably. Another thing is his personality and moral shades. I find his personality both amusing and uh, a might... Well, yeah, very much um, camaraderie in a way. Like it's someone who, it's the personality of someone that you kind of would want. Like as I said before, if this is someone I met in real life, I'd probably want to be friends with them if uh, I was a certain type of person. Also his moral shades, because he was willing, like yeah, there were ideas to do some stuff that were morally reprehensible. Like he want, probably wanted to kill the warden for killing his father. And he was willing to break into a place that he no longer had a right to be in, even though, even if it had been his home at one point, he no longer had claimed to be there. And, but he kind of turns around on this. Like, I don't know if this is a moral shades thing or just a change of heart, but after he breaks in and he's, conf and he's gotten there, he just realizes he just wanted to get some things left over from when he lived there. And that was what he really wanted. Because at this point in his life, he was confused. He he thought he knew what he wanted, but he probably didn't really. And, again, that's probably a point where a person is messed up. Their mind is foggy. And it's hard for them to think straight. So, yeah, that is completely understandable. And lastly is his love of family. Like, it's very apparent he's he loved his family. I mean, he idolized his father. He was probably heartbroken to hear that his father had been killed. He was close. He loves his sister. He wants what's best for her. And he also loves his family to a certain fault. Like he idolized his father and loved him, but at the same time, he didn't see 
the kind of man his father really was. And again, I think that's something that a lot of people can re relate with. We all, like again, I, there were sides to my parents I never saw till years later and I didn't like what I saw, but I could reconcile with it. I'm hoping at some point in the future they show that he reconciles with it and he's able to move on and become a better person because of it. And yeah, that's as far as it goes with appeal for me. He's just, I think, an interesting character as well as a good companion character. He would make a good protagonist, I think. If they ever made another Dragon Age game, if they did make like a side game, I would want him to be the protagonist. He would be my first pick. There's him and Varric. Or Morrigan. I know it's Morrigan, Nathaniel, no, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Howe, Morrigan, no, no, Varric, then Morrigan. Those are the three I would like there to be side stories about to get further information on them. And. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say a takeaway for this, though. Okay, this one is probably going to sound weird, but try to bear with me on this one. Um, it's kind of hard for me to find someone to compare Nathaniel Howe to. There's only one or two that come to mind. One is Jon Snow, and that Jon Snow was always hated by Cat, whatever the name of Ned Stark's wife is. She always hated him for being Ned's bastard and the child of another woman, or she thought that's what he was. And in some way, Jon Snow has always had to live a second-class citizenship, and has been, in some ways, he has paid for the fact of his father's in, supposed infidelity, and the man he thinks is his father. The other is Elric and Melina Benet, and that one is a stretch. Let me just say that up front, that is a stretch. Nathaniel Howe and Elric and Melda Benet, they are almost, there's nothing almost to connect them. The only connection they have is they have both been given a bad hand. Elric was given a life of misery, doomed from birth. Nathaniel Howe, he was given a bad hand and doomed from the moment his father let his ambition get the better of him. That was it. But they were both forced into this role by someone, by the actions of another being. Elric by the gods, and Nathaniel Howe by his father. And whereas Elric simply tried to do the best he could with it, Nathaniel Howe, I believe, could actually work to redeem that name and restore honor to his family. But again, that is a stretch on my part. That is a big ass stretch, and one that feel free to disagree fully, because like these are the two closest examples I could get. And if you can think of a character who does remind you of Nathaniel Howe, if you if you know him well, please feel free to tell me in the comments, because I, for the life of me, could not think of one, and it was driving me crazy. And the takeaway: this one was kind of hard for me, to be perfectly honest. Um, Nathaniel, with him, I think one thing was you gradually learn more about him as a person. You kind of see what he is really like. He's not just some entitled brat who is like, give me back what's mine. There is a person who has been hurt by someone else. And not in the like, stupid way. I mean, he has suffered or is suffering for someone else's actions and he hates it. But he also has different sides to him, and you kind of see these different sides more and more. There's not a lot to it because of the limitations of the game, I guess, and probably because the developers might not have thought to of how much they wanted to add, but yeah. And also, you see through him the impact of his father's actions. Now, let's say you have a story and you want to make a sequel. Let's say the bad guy had a son or a daughter. Maybe show how they have suffered and how the protagonist's actions have influenced them show that, oh, yeah, my actions had consequences. Another one is give depth. There wasn't a whole lot of depth with Hal. Like, he was just someone who was misguided, in my opinion. 
and what kind of gradually saw the light. And lastly, consider the, how a character has changed. I would say the thing that really changed how Nathaniel looked at things, besides just being around the war and seeing the kind of person he or she really was, it was also learning from his sister the truth about their father and talking about and learning more. And he's just at a loss. And it was through that revelation that he changed for the better, in my opinion. But that's just, those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments. And um, remember the game was rigged from the start.